So this tutorial question number two then. I'd like to approach it by thinking about the plan of action. And we'll find when we do this that actually the way the question's been written helps you with this plan, plan of action. It actually says find the angle of acceleration, find the applied torque, and therefore find the total work done. But in an engineering situation, the last bit is what we're interested in. We're interested in finding the total work done. Parts A and B are there just to help guide you through the plan. Okay? But you're not always going to have that sort of help. So let's think about it from the start and consider we're trying to find out what the total work done on this um, flywheel is. So the first thing we do is look for a formula that involves the work done. And what will that be? Can you remember it without looking at your formula sheet? We're talking about angular motion, so what's the equation for work? Torque times... Right, okay. So, we now need to think about what we know. Okay, all the things we know, and are we, have we got this information? And if not, can we find the information? So let's list all the things that we know about this flywheel. We know the mass is 125 kilograms. We know the radius of gyration is 150 millimeters. Not a convenient unit, so let's convert that straight away into meters. Because we're talking about kilograms, so kilograms go with meters and so on. Kilograms, meters, seconds is what we need. It's accelerated from rest, so what does that tell us? It tells us that omega 1 is naught. And then it accelerates to a speed of 1,250 RPM. Now that speed is not really a speed, is it? What are we given there? Yeah, we're given the frequency, aren't we? So actually we're told the frequency at the start equals 1,250, is it? Yeah, RPM. So straight away I need that in hertz. So that's 1,250 divided by 60, which is, so that's 20.8 hertz, just to be significant figure, hertz or revolutions per second. Okay? So we've now got the frequency in the right units. What else are we given? We're given that it makes 500 revolutions. So the number of revolutions, N, the number of revolutions, Five hundred. No unit associated with that, it's just the number of revolutions. The motion is resisted by a friction torque of 2.5 newton meters. So I also know that the friction torque is 2.5, is it, newton meters? So we have that work is torque times theta. Now, that's the problem, okay? We need the work. If I'm told the torque and I'm told the angle, problem solved, we just put the numbers in, there's the answer. We don't know the torque and we don't know the angle, but we can find out what they are. Can you tell me how we can find the angle, for example? Formula. Can you remember the formula without looking or if you can't look? Right, so theta equals 2 pi n. So our plan of action, so 1, theta, which is one of the things we need in this formula, equals 2 pi n. So I can now go ahead, put that value in, and I've got theta. But what about the torque? I don't know the torque, but I do know from stuff we were doing before, that the total torque uh, or the, on this thing, the total torque equals, and we've not written this one down actually, 
is the applied torque plus the friction torque and the stuff we've been doing before, okay? I've got the friction torque, so that's okay. I need the applied torque. Once I've got the applied torque, and then I can I add this friction torque, and I have this total torque. So, in this work formula here, this means the total, okay, torque, for the work done. Not only the work, the torque required to drive the flywheel, but also to overcome the friction. I'm not giving the applied torque, so I need another formula. Help me out. Sorry? Right. The applied torque equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Unfortunately, I'm not given either of those either, but are there any formula that will help us? Yep. I equals m k squared. Do I know the mass? Yep. Do I know the rate of acceleration? So we're getting somewhere now. I can find the inertia. But that leaves alpha. So what do I do to find alpha? So we've got another stage. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay, so alpha equals omega 2 minus omega 1 over t. I know omega 2, uh, sorry, omega 1 rather, that's 0. I don't know omega 2, and I don't know the time. So, not a very useful formula, okay? Is there another formula that might help? Think again. Another formula, omega 2 equals only 1 to the alpha 2, the first equation of motion, again, this is no good because we don't know T. So, omega equals 2 pi times frequency. Do we know um, the frequency? Right, okay. So we can find omega 2, but that still doesn't help us to find alpha, does it? So we've got omega 2, so um, this one is going to be useful to find omega 2, but we still need another formula. Yes, but we don't know T, James. Okay, so we need a formula that involves alpha and omega. We've now got omega 2, but it hasn't got T in it. Which one? It's this one in angular form, okay? Omega 2 squared equals omega 1 squared plus 2 alpha s, okay? Sorry, not s. Theta. Yeah, okay? So, do we know theta? Yes. Do we know omega 2? Yes, we can find it, 2 pi s. Do we know omega 1? Yes, it's 0. So, I can rearrange this formula to find alpha. And then once I've got alpha, I can then go back through the plan. In other words, what we need to do now is we've worked out what we're going to do, and now we've got to go backwards up through it. Okay? And if you look at the question, that's trying to help you with this. It's saying, first thing to do is find the angular acceleration. Well, that's what we're doing down the bottom here. Once we've got the angular acceleration, then it says find the applied torque, which is what we were talking about further down in the plan, so that finally we can find the work done. Okay? So what you've got to do now, and I'll leave you to do it, is to go through this plan backwards, effectively, and work out what the work's done, or calculate the work done. <coughs>